What's up, family? This is Ignite 2.0, the vodcast by young adults for young adults. I'm Julian. I'm Tamia. And I'm Josiah. And we're, we're your hosts. hosts. So deconstruction of faith is our topic today, you guys. Uh, basically, just talking about just how we see our faith in Jesus Christ and why so many people may think differently and even as deep as why so many people may be leaving the church to this day. You're absolutely right, Tamia. A lot of young adults, they go away from the church. And that's exactly what our generation is dealing with. Yeah, I'm interested in why uh, a lot of young people uh, leave the church, but I feel like I have a, a couple of thoughts of why. Like, sometimes when we, we go away, we go to college, we're not going to the same church. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, we're not going to... Like, when, once you get that freedom, it's like, am I going to wake up and go online and right. turn church on on Sunday yeah. morning? No, yeah. most of the time, no, I'm not. And and like, if I'm not going, I'm not gonna watch it online. Like, even though I'm supposed to watch it, but it's just that freedom. I, I can understand why that like, and then it becomes a habit. And then like, you stop going to church and then you forget. And I, I feel like that's the reason why. Uh, really that's what right, yeah. yeah. For me personally, like when I went out of state for college, um, I, I know what it feels like to get fed, like being here and we was raised here. Like, so I know what it feels like, but when I went out there, I'm still on the church hunt and I've been there four years. So for me personally, it's a lot easier for me to not stay disciplined mm -hmm. and just stay at the crib, do some homework or do whatever I want to do in that two hours of time that I probably, if I'm being honest, probably wouldn't be getting fed. So just sitting somewhere, just, you feel me? So, yeah, I feel like that's one of the most prominent reasons, just like, yeah, you just forget or, you know, life gets in the way. Yeah, I agree with everything you guys are saying. Um, I think that young adults, they start going through life and they start seeing other people's perspectives. Mm -hmm. And when they're not fully grounded and rooted in the word, then what other perspectives are saying starts start to make sense. And that eventually leads them away from the church, from yeah. Christ himself. So well, everything you guys are saying, like I said, that, that's spot on, nail, nail right on the head. Yeah, bro. Well, we got a very, very special guest that we know very well. Yes. We've been taught by. Yes. Tuesday night yeah. Bible studies. Yes. Uh, tacos. Chicken. Chick fil A. This uh, is our guy. Pizza. Our guy, Adrian. <laughs> minister, <laughs> minister. Wait, what? I, I call him Adrian. So. Hey, right. that, hey, look, that works for me. What's up, y'all? What's up, Adrian? What's up, Tamia? How you doing? I'm good. good to see y'all. Good to be on the show with y'all today. The set is looking lit. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, actually, I want to comment on what you guys were saying a little bit earlier because that's really important. Um, I think it was what oh nine when you guys graduated high school. I don't know why you keep no. Oh, you I was so confident. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Okay, I was so confident <laughs> when I said it. My bad. My bad. You guys were that. You guys were that. That first <laughs> pandemic that. class, right? <laughs> oh yeah, COVID class. So okay, twenty twenty. <laughs> right. When y'all graduated, and so much in the world, and even in your personal lives, has changed, mm -hmm. and that really is a big reason. I mean, even when you were saying earlier to me uh, about how you were being fed, mm -hmm. now you have to feed yourselves, right? Both spiritually right. and literally, right? Mm -hmm. No one's getting up in the morning making breakfast for you. You got to get your waffles and your eggs and your bacon and do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes that transition out of high school and being fed and now having to fend for yourself can be a difficult transition to navigate for young adults when you are opened up to freedom. And I think one thing that you all have in common was that when you all graduated high school, you guys all went out of state. Like, that's huge, right? right. You weren't down the street. You weren't able to say, hey, mom, dad, this and this and this and that. Mm -hmm. You're across state lines. It's three hours, four hours, maybe even, you know, on the other side of the country that you're now having to deal and wrestle with stuff that you weren't having to deal with before. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important while you're in that position of being fed, that you have a strong foundation in who you are and who your identity is in Christ.
because that's going to get tested. That's going to get pushed as you get older. And so if your foundation is strong and you know who you are, yeah, the wind will come, the rain will fall, but ultimately you'll always find yourself back to your roots. And I think that's what's important. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. agree with that, especially like for me, I always say this and it, like I say it jokingly, but it's all seriousness. Like I feel like for me, every time I cross the state line, driving back and forth to Arizona, it literally feels like I'm going into a battle, like at all times. And it's like, it sounds funny, but it's really serious. Like, because here I'm getting fed, my mom and dad are in the other room. I come to church every Sunday. I'm out there. It's like, okay, I'm now being tested on what I got taught out here. Like things that I got taught, like now you gotta, you gotta put them to work now. So it's really every man for himself. And that's honestly how it's been. And coping with it is real hard. And I feel like that's what makes people so easily able to give up. Like, when leaving the church and like, okay, like, forget this. I'm cool. Like, I'll just live life. And, you know. Yeah. And you guys aren't alone. According to a survey done by LifeWay Church, they surveyed uh, 2000 of your peers and they all have said the same thing that life happens, right? You go to college and you're now you're in charge of your schedule, mm -hmm. right? You're in charge of planning when your classes begin and and, and and there's no one really over your shoulder saying, hey, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. You've learned through trial and error, like, oh, man, I forgot to do this. And now it has this domino effect on the rest of my life. And I've been there, there myself where life has gotten busy, right? And you mean well. And it's like, okay, you, you say, okay, I'll come back to the church or I'll come back to it next week. And then next week happens and then you push it off again and then eventually you find yourself three four months a year out because yeah. you because you just kept putting it off mm -hmm. i feel like that's it's natural though because like especially if you will go to a private school like how we went to a private school you like yeah. you're getting all that freedom and then it's like once you get that freedom you're trying to learn yourself and then like josiah said earlier you hear other perspectives of people and um that's getting in your head. So I feel like I feel like it's that's not like a natural uh human effect like that just mm -hmm. happens because we get exposed to us so much so fast. And then it's mm -hmm. like we're trying to figure out who we are so we don't so sometimes we might, might be going to church and even though like you don't you're a Christian that like we don't have to go to church like every time. Like you know, like you know, right. but we, we want to, like, we, we try to, but I'm just saying that to say, like, when we're exposed to all that, we forget. Like, on Sunday, we might have a whole bunch of work that's due. And now and now it's like, oh, Sundays, a whole bunch of work is due. That's when we know we got to finish all our work. And now right. we, we done, for, like, forgot it, it's church. Then we want to also, we're humans, we also want to have free time for our, ourselves and then have fun. And, like, it's just a whole battle of all that. That's why I feel like... Um, it leaves us like away for a second, but always come back. Like, I feel like it always yeah. comes back. But I feel like it's a natural effect. Like when you first leave, it's like you got to figure out yourself, and then it's like, oh, you realize, oh, I haven't been going to church. Then like stuff is going wrong. Then you're realizing like, whoa, what am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm I'm, I'm not talking to God. I'm not close to God. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like you start realizing, and then. You, you come back. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And it's crazy because we had a viewer submission and it like it ties perfectly into what you were saying. This person said, sometimes when I feel like everything is going wrong, I feel like God is not with me and I have fallen out of his good graces. How do I get back to having his light shine on me? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's such a profound but yet simple statement at the same time. Because yeah. even when you are in the church, there's still moments in life where you feel like God's not with you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's sometimes due to situation and circumstance, right? We tend to think that God is with us when things are going good. And then if things aren't going good, he's not with us. Mm -hmm. But that's where faith comes into it because it's not based upon what you feel. It's not based upon situation or circumstance. It's based on what you know. Mm -hmm. And what you know is that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So regardless of whether or not things are going 
good or bad, that's not indicative of God being with you. Mm -hmm. God's word is, and if that's what he said in his word, then that settles it. But I get the wrestle with the with the feeling because I've I've been there myself where I felt like I felt the presence of God. I'm like, wow, this is great. But then that presence lifts and you go back to life and you and you deal with drama and, and, and you just deal with with work and whatever it is. And it feels like, okay, God, where'd you go? You know, and so that's where we again have to kind of go back to our foundation and that our faith is based upon what the word of God says. So to that viewer, that 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 a viewer or anyone else who may have a, a similar concern, mm -hmm. I want to remind you that God is with you because his word says he's with you, mm -hmm. period. There's no comma. There's no semicolon. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so that's what we have to go back to in those moments when it feels like he's not there. Absolutely. Um, like I said in another episode, that was something that I was dealing with because I would feel like, oh, I haven't been spending time with God. I haven't been reading my word. Um, and something would come up and I would want to pray like, ah, I need your help, Lord. But I would feel ashamed to go to God and pray because I I was I have been talking to him or reading my word, you know, so um i I I hear what you're saying. we can he's he he will never leave me, never forsake. And um my my sister told me that um that, that feeling of shame, that, that comes from the devil. That's the devil trying to get us to not go back to God to stay on our own understanding when we don't have the answers. Like you said, the, our faith comes from the, from the word. So yeah. I, I, I feel exactly what you're saying. And it, and it takes some time to train yourself not to rely on your emotions because yeah. you've been yeah. used to it, right? Yeah. And so you go back to what's, what comes natural. You, you go back to what comes easy, but faith is not always easy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Faith is like, I'm going to do what God's word says even if everything else is telling me that this isn't going to work right. or even if everything else is, is in my life is telling me that that's not true. Mm -hmm. I can't go by the feeling. I, I can't go by the experience. I have to solely rely on what God's word says. And sometimes when we're in faith, we're, we're looking for that reassurance that what we're doing is right. And we look to our emotions to give us that reassurance, but your emotions can lie to you. Yeah, Your emotions can, and they will lie to you. And that's why we have to go back to God's word because that's not going to change. Yeah, I'm even sorry. to piggyback off of like what both you guys were saying, if you think about it, like society shows you when it comes down to staying close to God, even when you have done wrong. Like if you think about our family members, like with me, if I got in trouble with my mom, like, and I'm on punishment or something, I'm staying away. Like, society kind of teaches you, like, if you're on a punishment or if you're doing something bad, like, you stay away from your parents. You don't go near them. Like, or if you do, you're going to say sorry. And then you kind of just distance yourself because you're in trouble. You feel ashamed and things like that. But God calls us to do the very opposite. It's like, if you're falling away, I need you to come closer. So it's like, just having that faith and just like you said, not moving by your emotions because the heart is deceiving, very deceiving. Um, you got to, that's the time to stick even closer to God because the enemy, he wants you to, is if he can get you as far from God as possible, job well done. And that's what we're trying to prevent. So it's just like, yeah, you definitely got to stick close to God and knowing like, this is what he said. God can't lie in the discussion. If you have doubts, does that mean you're deconstructing? And is church hurt a real thing? We'll find out when we come back on Ignite 2.0. If you have doubts, does that mean you're deconstructing? And is church hurt a real thing? We'll find out. What's up, y'all? It's Julian, one of the co-hosts of Ignite 2.0. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Tamia. Young adults, it's your boy, Josiah. I'm a co-host here on Ignite 2.0. Ignite 2.0, the podcast by young adults for young adults, features a diverse conversation about being under the influence. 
So our topic today is on young adults being under the influence. So we're young adults in 2024. What are our biggest influences? I would say social media, music. Social media for sure. Social media is a big one. Exciting, lighthearted, serious, and from the heart. Best describes the Vodcast Ignite 2.0. The Vodcast is airing this Monday at 6 p.m. right here on our EIFM YouTube channel. Also, join us for a live chat during the Vodcast. Tell a friend. Tell everybody you know to log on this Monday. What's up, family? We're back with Ignite 2.0, and we're talking about church hurt. Do you know what that is? I never heard of that either. Can you explain that? Absolutely. And actually, before I explain what church hurt is, I want to go back and I want to make sure that we understand what deconstruction means. And so the word deconstruction means to intellectually wrestle with what you believe. And something that you mentioned earlier about, you know, being exposed to different things. Some of those things that you guys are exposed to are different beliefs, whether it be politically, whether it be religiously, or just even in general ideas that make you kind of come back and question what you've been taught. And so again, that's natural. That's expected. There's nothing wrong with having those questions on those or those doubts, but it's important for us to always bring those back to the word of God and not wrestle with those things internally. Now, church hurt is this idea of there being an expectation of who people are supposed to be. And then you find out that they're not. And because you've put your confidence and, and, and trust in them, it causes you to get hurt. Like you can have someone that you've known all your life that you look up to, who you think in your eyes can do no wrong. And then you find out that they do. And it makes you question everything they ever told you just because they made that one little mistake. That's what church hurt is. And, and sometimes it can be a leader in the church Sometimes it can be another member in the church. And I think it's important to have a proper framework and context for who the church is. Because many times people will mix the church being God. And so if I got hurt by the church, I got hurt by God. Mm. And, and the church and God are not the same. And so we have to remember that and that the church is made up of people right? And people aren't perfect. They're struggling with whatever their issues are, but they're all ideally, hopefully moving in the right direction. So when we keep God with God and we keep the church, with, you know, the church, and we don't get those two mixed up, I think we help guard ourselves against that church hurt. You know, I think we've heard it before with Apostle Price, Pastor Price. I think you've probably even heard me say it. Don't put us on a pedestal don't because that's what leads to the hurt is that we think this person is so high or so ascended that they can't make mistakes and we've already seen that they can absolutely um i want to speak more about that um you said apostle yourself dr fred price you you guys all say don't put us on the pedestal and like they said, um, they actually taught this. I've actually heard them say this in a sermon. Don't just take what I'm teaching and and what I'm saying and just run with it. Go back on your own time and do your own work. Spend your own time with the Lord, and because our faith is in is in God, not in a pastor. I, I we're using uh, those 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 men and you as an example. But that's something that goes on in a lot of churches. So um, do, would you like to speak more about that? or Yeah, like you should never put a ministry gift on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. Never. The Bible tells us that the author and the finisher of our faith is who? Uh -huh. Jesus. So he's our foundation. He's what we should be looking to, not people. And there's, and, and there's nothing wrong with looking up to people, admiring them going to them for wisdom and guidance, but you just have to keep it in its proper context and always fall back on Jesus because he's your firm foundation. He's the author and the finisher of your faith, not man.
But one scripture that comes to mind, um, we see a man, a disciple of Jesus, wrestle with doubt. And so in John chapter 20 and verses 25 through 27, Jesus has already uh, come back and he's appeared to his disciples. And so the disciples go back and they tell this man, Thomas, we just saw Jesus. And Thomas is like, you got to be kidding me. You're tripping. He's dead. He's not coming back. And they're like, no, no, Thomas. Like we for sure saw Jesus. And they're all sitting in the house having dinner. And the next day, you know, guess who walks in the door? It's Jesus. And he appears to Thomas and says, hey, Thomas, I heard you were talking about me. I, I heard you didn't believe that I was back. And he's like, hey, look, it's me. Look at the holes that were in my hand. Look at the holes that were in my side. Touch me, feel me. And it's me. And Thomas came to a point where he believed because he saw. And Jesus even says at the end of verse 27, you know, Thomas, it's great that you believed because you saw, but blessed is the man who believes and hasn't seen. And I think we can take from that, that it's okay to come to God with our doubts because Jesus loves us so much that he wants to meet us right where we are. The same way he met Thomas when they were at the house having dinner with the other disciples, God wants to meet you right where you are with your doubts and your questions, and he can handle it. If God has you in a hibernation um, mode in life, and that's when like the doubt comes because you're not seeing nothing. It's like you feel like you're not being seen. You feel like you're not doing what you're supposed to. You feel like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and nothing's coming about it. Like you're not seeing a change. Like you're stuck in one place, like a hibernation. Like you literally sleep, mm -hmm. like staying there. Like, like that's when I feel like. Uh, for us young adults, that's when doubt comes in. Cause for me, I play basketball, and I'm uh, um, I redshirted this year. And before I I, I had like uh, where I used to get doubts and stuff like that. Because when I first graduated high school, I, I I wasn't playing basketball. Like I was just at school. I wasn't even on a team. And but I wanted to play college basketball. So uh, that was like a hard time in my life where I had I I. I had doubts, but since I had a good foundation from coming from Christ, like I, I was be able to like go, get through it. But like, I understand like the doubts. Like I had doubts. I had to keep strong in faith. I had to do my own thing. Like I had to, I had to go get up and be like, Nah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make this of my life. Like I had to stand on my faith, literally, like, and show the Lord, like, Nah, I believe, Lord. Like I know stuff is not looking right, but I, I believe, like, I believe you, Lord. Like I believe this is what you want me to do. This is what I'm doing, like, and now that I'm redshirted and I didn't play this year, it was way easier for me to just go through not playing basketball. Like, I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't have that many doubts because I, obviously I'm on a team, but I didn't, it was, like, easier because I went through that first phase of um, God testing my faith. So now my faith is stronger, and then I just know that, like, it's going to keep going. God, keep testing your faith, but. I feel like I just want to say that to like to young adults, like there's going to be phases where you're down and God is really testing your faith and you're going to have to like stand on it. You got to have to stand on it. You got to believe. And I'm still doing that to this day. Like I'm still doing that now. Like you're going to have to keep doing it, but it's going to get easier. Like It's not going to get easier, but you're going to realize like when those faith tests are coming and you're going to know like, okay, I need to get, I need to be on my word. This is, I need to be saying this. Like, I know I'm down right now, but and just believing, like keeping faith, like like God said, like a little mustard seed of faith can move a mountain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So like Thanks. that's all you need, literally. literally. Like you're gonna have your down moments, like let that go five minutes, get five minutes, get get that out. Then you realize like, man, I'm God, so I'm God. Like God has me. Mm -hmm. Right. And keep yeah. faith. And I've known you two for years and I know how important and how passionate basketball is to you and there's a saying that says game recognizes game well i believe that passion recognizes passion and i understand where you're coming from julian when you're passionate about something and it doesn't seem like what you're passionate about and and what you believe that god is giving you a passion for is going to happen so as an encouragement to you and to anyone else watching who 
knows what their given, what their God-given purpose is, what their passion is, and they're not necessarily working in it right now or doing it, and then that causes them to step and, and doubt, I say press into God and just be reminded that there are seasons in life where you're not always doing your dream job. Right. But it doesn't mean that God has left you. It doesn't mean that, you know, you should step away from your trust and your and your confidence in God. Because I wasn't always a youth pastor. Mm -hmm. I had other odd and in jobs that I worked in the meantime. But I knew that this was always going to be that end result for me. So don't 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 allow that discouragement to come in sure. when you're not doing what you know you're supposed to do. Because God's preparing you for it. And if I had taken it 10 years ago, I, I'm, I might have not been ready for it. There were some things that God needed to work out in me. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then now that I'm here, going on five, six years, the, the timing was perfect. Yeah, I feel like everything we go through, this little test of faith, like you said, is is building us up to that person that we want to be, like that who we think we are, that the main, like you know, the best us. That's mm -hmm. what we think we are. That's God literally showing us like you have to go through this first to be able to be this strong and and for me, him to use us the, how the way he wants us to use us to be strong on our faith. Like I feel like that's just how it is. Like once you realize that, it's like it's e it's it, it it comes a little easier. Like okay, like you just realize, man, God got me, God got me, and. Also, I want to say, like, to the viewers, like, just try. Just try it. Just try to keep faith on one simple thing. Like, ask God about something that you know is, like, in, within God's will. And just try. Just try to keep try to keep faith, a little bit of faith, and see what happens. Because that's what I did one time. And something happened. Literally, I was a child. I lost my money. It was the first time I ever got cash. <laughs> the first time my parents gave me cash. I was in the store. I lost it. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, dang, I'm so irresponsible. I'm a little kid. I lost my money that fast. <laughs> like, and I'm at the dinner table. I'm not telling them, like, I'm at the dinner table. And then I just prayed to God at the dinner table. And I, I was like, Lord, please let me find my money. Please, Lord, please let me find my money. I don't want to, I don't want uh, to look like irresponsible. Like, please let me just let it pop up. And I, I kept faith about that. I walked to my room. I came back and I, I, I ate dinner. Then after dinner, I looked on the ground, and the money was right there on the floor. And it was not there when I first sat down. Right, when you so had I'm dinner like, the first yeah. time. So I'm like, it works. And ever since then, I just I just keep faith. Literally now, I have a car off of, off of praying off of it and keeping faith. Man. Like, and that's the crazy thing about faith. The worst thing that could happen is God actually works. Like, that's it. Like, he's not going to fail. Like, the absolute worst thing that could happen when you have faith is that God actually does what he told you he was going to do. So it's like, for me, like I'm in the same predicament as you. I literally have the car of my dreams off of faith. I didn't even, I, that's not even the car that I wanted as a first car. And God was like, well, I know your desire, so I'm gonna give it to you. You feel me? Like, yeah. so yeah, it's literally, yeah. It's like, right. It's that it's crazy, but it's like literally when it comes to deconstructing your faith, you genuinely have to know who God is and who God is to you and whose you are and you're his. It's like he's not going to fail you like ever. Like the worst thing that can happen, literally, like think about that. The worst thing that can happen is that he actually does what he told you he was going to do. And that's just going to make you 10 times stronger. That don't mean the battles are going to stop. It just means you just going to get stronger, thicker skin, and you 10 times greater. Right. And to, to your point, you said that wasn't even the call you wanted. Sometimes we're asking God for things and we have faith in them about certain things. And that's not what we need. Mm -hmm. God is going to send us exactly what we need at, at his right timing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, for the viewers, they might not know that they, they, they might be new. That they they might be watching this for the first time. That they, they might be this, this might be their first experience with CCC. This is a faith based church. Mm -hmm. Word to apostle. So let's just br break it all the way down. What is faith? How do we apply our faith? You know. Yeah. Um. 
Well, first of all, faith is a spiritual law and um, laws are intended to be operated by and, and governed by. And so what the law of faith says, um, one, of the, one of the parts of the law says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what you hear and what you allow to come into your ear gate will shape your faith. Whether you, be, whether you, you know, believe in what God's word says or you believe in what somebody else says, you're going to have faith for something. So you can look at yourself and say, what am I listening to the most? What am I entertaining the most? That's what you have faith for. And so it's not that you don't have faith in God or that you don't believe in God, but you've been listening to other voices more than you've been listening to the voice of God, reading his word, coming to church. And so now you've just developed your faith in another area. Mm -hmm. So it's as simple as listening to something else, right? Like one thing that I love about God, it's like God's not complicated, you know? Like it's, it, it, it really is a matter of changing what you're listening to. Yeah. And sometimes we think, well, I can listen to this and listen to that and still have faith. It's like trying to have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. There are some things that you're going to have to tune out and turn off so that your faith can continue to grow in God. And you can't always have the best. You can't always have your cake and eat it too, you know? Sure. Right. Yeah. And one thing that I wanted to mention that you guys were both hitting on earlier was the importance of knowing who God is to you and knowing who Jesus is to you. I remember in scripture, uh, Jesus was, was talking to Peter and he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And Peter says, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're the Messiah. Some say you're a prophet. Some say you're just a regular old guy. But then Jesus rephrased the question and asked, but Peter, who do you say I am? So Julian, Josiah, Tamia, and the viewers, who do you say Jesus is? Because that is what, that's the question that you need to answer to continue to stay rooted and grounded in your faith is who is Jesus to you? Is he your Lord and Savior? Or is he just a man that you heard stories about when you were in Sunday school? You need to be able to answer that question. And if you can answer that question correctly, that will anchor your faith. And so when you are exposed to other ideas and beliefs and ways of thinking, that anchor always brings you back to center. Man, snaps. What I've seen dealing with my peers, um, why they lose their faith or go away, um, they say things like, oh, if God is so great, if God is so good, why does he allow bad things to happen to good people? I thought God was good all the time, you, you know? So um, what do you, what strategies do, do you have to, to combat that, that way of thinking? Context matters. And I can't echo enough how much context matters. When you look at the world that we live in, I think there are three things at play. There's us, there's God, and then there's the devil. You know, we have a real enemy. And within context, we need to understand biblically who's responsible for what. Because the fact that we live in an imperfect world and sin and there's death and there's suffering, that's because of man. Right. Man made the choice and the decision to allow that to come into the world through their disobedience. Mm -hmm. Now, through God's grace, he sent his son, Jesus, to come back and to reconcile us to him. But that doesn't mean that we are now alleviated of our responsibility to make the choice for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Here's what God wants for you. And you can either choose to have what God wants for you through obedience and sacrifice, or you can choose to go through your own way. Now, if you choose to go through your own way, that's fine. God still loves you, but don't come back later and then want to put it on God that bad things are happening or things aren't going the way that you don't want them to. To your point earlier, bad things happen because that's life. The Bible tells us that the rain falls on the just and the unjust, saved or not saved, black or white, rich or poor, life is going to happen to everyone. That's just a part of being alive. Mm -hmm. 
And so we have to keep things in their proper context. Like <laughs> I would have my check engine light come on on my car and it's very easy to be super spiritual like oh that's the enemy trying to attack me he don't want me to get to church no you need an oil change you need to keep up with the maintenance on your car a flat tire is not the devil sometimes you roll over a nail and it gets stuck in your tire and one thing that I, that I love about the word of God is, is, is that through the word of God and the Holy Spirit it gives you perspective to keep things in their proper context because sometimes a nail in the tire is just simply that. Yes, there's definitely a verse. There's everything um, has its own season. Everything has its own time. Ecclesiastes talks about that. And it says that there is a season and there is a time for everything under heaven. And so we have to remember that life has its seasons, right? Just, you know, there's spring, there's, there's fall, there's winter. And there's summer, right? Those are the four seasons. Okay. <laughs> um, that life has those seasons as well. And so you don't wear a full coat and a beanie and a scarf in the middle of the summer. Right. We adjust and we dress appropriately for the different seasons in life that we have. And so right. we have to keep that in mind too, that like, hey, there are some seasons where God may just have you sitting down and just have right. you work on you right. for a season so that when you get to where he wants you to be, you're ready for that. Mm -hmm. And your character can sustain. Look, your character has to sustain where God is taking you. That's good. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how many shots you can make. I don't care how many threes you can shoot in consecutively. If you don't have the character and the morals for where it is that God wants to take you, your talent won't keep you there. And God needs to work on that talent and that character and and the who you are when no one's looking so that you can be who God wants you to be when everyone's looking and that spotlight is on you. So don't rush out of those seasons of life. Mm -hmm. Again, going back to the whole thing about keeping things in context, people often will ask, well, you know, again, to your point earlier, why do bad things happen to good people? And when you ask that question, in context, you understand that everyone after Adam was born into sin. Mm -hmm. And sin is a nasty, disgusting thing that entered into the world through Adam's disobedience. But we have to remember that God had nothing to do with that. And some people ask that question thinking, well, God's all powerful, right? We've heard that before, right? God can do anything. That's not true. God can't violate your will. And so there are times to where things happen to us because we've opened the door and God has to honor and respect mm -hmm. our, choice, our choice, even if that choice leads us to harm. Right. Even if that choice leads us away from him, he has to honor it because he loves us. And he wants us to come to him on our own accord. And people wrestle with that and the whole idea of just free will and who's really in control. Is everything happening to me because God already planned it out and I'm just, you know, moving along? Or do I have a choice? And the Bible tells us we have a choice. How can Jesus tell us in his word that I set, that I set before you today life and death? Choose life if you didn't have a choice. Right, right. We that's have a choice. Adam. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> and that's why I feel yeah, like the choice. part, I feel like it wouldn't be love if he didn't give us the choice. Yeah. And right. it's like, what people have to understand is, and this is something I've questioned God big time. Like the picture, the picture of how he wanted things was, I believe, right before Genesis 3, because I think Genesis 3 is where everything happened. Mm -hmm. That's the picture. Genesis yeah. 1 and 2 is the picture. Look at that and see how God wanted everything. God can't contradict what he already wrote in the word. He's not a liar. So it's like things have to play out. Things just have to happen. It's it's a sad case. And uh, if we're this hurt and distraught by like, let's just say like when young kids get cancer and they die, imagine how God feels about that, right? Like he doesn't, it says in God's word that creation is groaning, like because they, creation mm -hmm. knows that there's a point in time where, okay, we're striving to be perfect. Like even our own bodies, like our spirits, are groaning because we know our spirits know that 
there will come a day where we'll have a match where we're perfect, just like our spirit. So it's like, if you understand it from that perspective, I feel like it could eliminate the questions because God loves us enough to where he's like, this world isn't perfect. You could choose wrong and it could lead to death, but I love you. So I'm gonna give you a choice. Yeah. And what we have in Jesus Christ is the hope right. that when all this is said and done, there will be no more tears. Right. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more suffering. All right, family. So we talked about the deconstruction of our faith, how to keep our faith, what faith is, um, why the young adults lose their faith and go away from the church. Um, we've had a special guest and our good friend, Mr. Adrian Jenkins here with us, dropping gems and bombs, uh, giving the great knowledge. Uh, what did you guys think about what you guys heard today? Uh, I feel like I wouldn't say I learned anything new because this is our church. I've been going here for like my whole life. So right, walk by faith, faith not by sight. Yeah, yeah, literally, I have a tattoo oh, on my yeah. arm. Like literally, have that tattoo on my arm. But um, I just want to thank Adrian for coming on a show yeah. and giving us another great show, dropping gems for the young. Um, Adults, yeah, I think we, this is another good episode. <laughs> yeah, we. I'm definitely glad we talked about this because, I mean, I've been going here my whole life. But at the same time, it's like, just like Pastor always says, like, you got to be stirred up by being constantly reminded. And this is something I really hope that all of the viewers watching just were able to take into consideration and to understand that when you know who you are and whose you are, that changes the, the your faith in general and it'll really help you to fight a lot of the battles that are just in this life i just want to say thank you to all the viewers for tapping in and watching ignite 2.0 uh and thank you again adrian appreciate you thank my you, pleasure <laughs> if you want to be a part of our show to express your comments share your experience or just submit questions you can go to the link on the screen or scan the QR code on the screen as well. See y'all soon.